Welcome back once again. My name is Mr. Charles Fonike. In today's video tutorial, we'll be discussing on characteristics of liquid dielectric locks. So in today's video, we'll be discussing on the characteristics on liquid dielectric locks, and which are we have three important dielectric and liquid uh, locks. The number one is electrical properties. The number two is heat transfer characteristics. And the third one is chemical stability. So these are the things that we are going to discuss in today's video, how it transfers the heat in terms of the characteristics and the, the chemical stability in terms of liquid dielectric uh, losses. Because each of them, they have their losses as well. In electrical properties, it also have its own losses. But before we proceed on that, Remember in our previous video, which we have discussed on so many topics so far, the same thing on dielectric losses. In my previous video, we discussed of an extra, we discussed of two types of extra, which I told you about organic extra and, uh, and uh, sulfuric extra. We also discussed on the silicon oil and uh, synthetic hydrocarbon all those videos have been shoot and uh, i have uploaded as well if you have not watched those videos please uh, go to my channel charles electronics tutorials go just subscribe comment like and share so in in today's video just as i said we will be discussing on this characteristic of liquid dielectric loss the number one, let's discuss on um, the characteristics, bring the electrical properties, the characteristic aspect of it, and which so many things that you are going to discuss on this electrical properties, it has been discussed by me as well, and the videos are still on my channel. So, chemical properties, as in electrical properties, the electrical the electrical properties are essential in determining the dielectric performances of liquid. How do we determine, just to show you that, why electrical properties are essential in dielectric performances of liquid. So in that case, it is our responsibility to know how important it is in terms of and liquid, dielectric liquid, how it performs, the dielectric properties and uh, the characteristics of electricity and electrical properties in liquid dielectric. So I you will also see some other aspects of it, other why is it essential in determining the electrical performances of liquid. So in that case, now Dielectrics are capacitance per unit volume or relative permittivity. Another one is resistivity. All this one, I believe in my previous video, I have discussed capacitance, I have discussed relativity, relative permittivity, and so on. All these things have been shot by me. All, all these things, the videos are still on on my channel if what i'm saying here is in case maybe i may not have all the time to explain it which i am expressing whosoever that is watching this one should know that this video is is also available on relative permittivity and also capacitance per unit volume in my channel because i discuss everything about capacitance and all the permittivity as well so what I'm trying to say here is, these are among of the electrical properties that are very essential in determining the performances of dielectric in liquid, uh, di di uh, dielectric performances of liquid. So all these things here are important, whose capacitance or relative permittivity and what resistivity, all these things are also important as well. So another one is loss sergeant. I have told you the work of this, how it works, or you can also call it power factor. 
power factor. All this, all this, uh, all what I'm mentioning here, or what I'm mentioning here, are the essential aspects of the the performances of um, um, dielectric of liquid. So in that case, this one is very important as well. Loss agent or power factor, and also it also has the ability to withstand dielectric stress. So from what I just said, I also want you to understand that all these things that I mentioned, the videos is on my channel. I am just summarizing. These are the, just the things that you should bear in mind in terms of properties or characteristics of dielectric of liquid, how they perform, their performances. All these things are the essential performances of dielectric performances of liquid. I am just mentioning them so that you will not get or misunderstand or you will get confused. So in that case, this permittivity must be the petroleum oil. Very, it varies from two, two to six. It varies from two zero to to two point six, and in terms of silicon oil, from two zero to seventy three. Remember. When I discuss about this silicon, silicon oil, I showed you the image of it and I told you how it works, how it functions. So all these things are just the important, the important characteristics of dielectric performances of liquid. This is another one. Resistivity use high voltage application more than what you are seeing here is 10 raised to power 16. 10 raised to power 16 ohms meter. Don't mind what, what you are seeing here. It's 10 raised to power 16 ohms meter. That is all about it. Now, in terms of this, um, sorry, in terms of this, um, when I'm, uh, let me just give you some brief explanation. This is the permittivity of most petroleum. In terms of petroleum, it has from 2.0 to 2.6. In terms of silicon oil, from 2.0 to 73. Get that thing on your score. Now, this sergeant, now, I want to use this um, sergeant or this thing as in the, to explain briefly on how it works maybe in terms of to determine the power losses in cable, in, in cable, it could be um, electrical cable, it could also be networking cable, it, it can also be our high tension, we have 33 kVA cable, we also have 11 kVA cable, all depending. So I am about to use this power factor to explain a little bit aspect of it. Now, Power factor determines power losses and is an important parameter in cables or in cable, in cable or in cables and also in capacitor. Power factor in transformer, power factor in transformer, the dielectric loss, the dielectric loss in the oil is what? Neglect when compared to copper and iron losses. Now, what I'm trying to say here is, in terms of cable, the power factors is also play an important role. In cable, it play important role. Just as I say, it could be networking cable. It could be 11 kVA, 33 kVA cable. It it can also be the common cable that we use in running our our home appliance being um, electrical cable as well. So now, in terms of transformer, because transformer also it has its own oil. In terms of transformer, is 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 uh, is compare between copper and iron in terms of the losses. 
So what I am explaining here is it is negligible when compared to copper and iron. Why is it like that? That is how it works. The power factor when compared to copper and iron is their losses. When you compare their losses, then you see how it works. So that is how it is. So let's go straight to this one is still under electrical property as well. Now we are to discuss on the strength, dielectric strength. I have I have already made video on also on dielectric strength, strength as well. But I just want to give you some a little summary of it. Now it is dielectric strength is the most important parameter. Why is the most important? important parameter then you will see then you will know it depends on the atomic and molecular properties of the liquid itself that is very important now in that case what i'm explaining here is it depending on the atomic and molecular properties of the liquid you know we have types of liquid which i have discussed it as well i have discussed extra i have discussed Chlorate, carbohydrate, and carbon, hydrocarbon. We have also discussed on um, synthetic hydrocarbon, silicon, and so on and so forth. All those ones, all those things are types of liquid as well, but they are all oil. So depending on the liquid itself, because their characteristics might not be the same strength of it. So the dielectric term might not be the same. So the same thing applies to their characteristics, so depending on the liquid itself. So, in, in that case now, in terms of dielectric strength, in practical, in practical, the dielectric strength depends on the following. What are the following? The material of the electrode. In terms of the practical, when you are to do the practical and you have seen it, how it works, it just depends on the following. Which the number one is, Material of the electrode, material matters a lot. Secondly, the temperature that you are also using, using during the process. Thirdly, the types of voltage applied. Are you using 120? Are you using 240? Depending on the just type of voltage applied. The fourth, but not the, the last one, not the least, also depend on the gas gas content in the liquid the gas content in the liquid also depending so that is why I, so that is why i have to make it brief so that you will not get misunderstand of what i am saying so that is the reason why in terms of the practical you should also concentrate and know what you are doing because if you use above the voltage that you are not supposed to use based on the particular liquid that you are using, it will affect it will affect that particular material. So that is how it works. Now let's go to heat transfer. Heat transfer. Heat transfer catalytics. Now the main factor, the main factors that control the heat transfer are thermal conductivity and thermal conductivity and viscosity. Thermal conductivity and viscosity. And the symbol is K for conductivity, while the viscosity is V for, for it. Now, let's just see how the formula, how it looks like. How is it arranged, properly arranged? Now, the heat transfer, the heat transfer mainly by conversion under natural atmospheric cooling condition. Conversion is what? Is given by V, F, brackets and close. Okay, this tray is supposed to be at the top here, and AC slash V. Now, this V is the number, though I am also going to show you 
or everything what it means here so in this area this area is trying to explain in terms of conversion cooling conversion the cooling conversion in terms of the atmospheric natural natural atmospheric condition how the weather is okay depending on where you are maybe where i am might not be suitable with so and so so thing like this but what i'm saying here in terms of natural atmospheric pressure or atmospheric cooling condition conversion are this now let me give you all this thing what it what it simply means now k is for thermal conductivity y a is for coefficient of expansion c is for specific heat per unit volume y v is kinematic viscosity and the end is is it has a specific value which is 0 0.25 to 0 0.33 so with this now you can be able to calculate any of them if you are in any way of solving this kind of problem that is related to it you can solve it on your own and give the answer to whosoever that asks you to do the assignment so this is how these are the formula and this is how it works just as i said the main factor that control the heat transfer are thermal conductivity so these are the two things that control the heat transfer and that's what i also want you to understand so let's go to chemical stability insulating liquid are subjected to thermal and electrical stress in the presence of material like oxygen, water, fiber, and etc. So what you understand, remember that insulating liquid are just like something that, that could not conduct an electric or something that will not conduct an uh, conduct. It is not a conductivity material. Let me put it in that form. So in that case, Insulating liquid are subjected to timer and electrical stress in the presence of material like oxygen, water, and fibers. And you know what this oxygen means. You know what water means. You, you also know what uh, fiber means. Maybe you might you might you might not be seen or you might have not seen the fibers. But I believe that as a science student, you have seen oxygen. You have also seen water. In fact. Even the less guy itself knows what water is all about. So that is what I'm trying to say here is the insulating liquid are subjected to thermal and electrical stress in the presence of all this. During the during the where it has been subjected, these two thermal and electrical stress are the two things that it is subjected to. And in the presence of oxygen, water, and fiber so in that case now this will cause the gang the gangration this will this will cause the degradation of the liquid which which can result in corrosion which can result in corrosion impairment of heat transfer, increased dielectric losses, discharge, and arcing. Now, when it has been subjected to thermal and electric stress, now, in the presence of, the, uh, of oxygen, liquid, and uh, in the presence of oxygen, water, and fiber, now, now, since, since it has been subjected in, in, in those three elements that I just mentioned now, now, it, it will cause the degradation of the liquid, which can result in corrosion. And it can also result in impairment of heat transfer and increased electric losses. So those are the disadvantage aspects of it. So in that case, in terms of discharging and Arcing. And you know something that is arcing is to, should I say, uh, uh, have 
a dot on the middle that is to show you that this thing has it has an issue it can break at any time that is what i mean by that so in that case please i i would like to end this video here if you don't understand this one you can go back again if you have anything to comment to say please comment it below like and share subscribe to my channel thank you once again for watching see you next week